Hey everyone, good morning. Welcome to my office. It's Ms. Storms. Here we are all together. Um, we're going to read a bit more of The Boy at the Back of the Class by Anjali Q. Ralph. We are on chapter 14 and it's called The Three Plans. In the movies, people go on a top secret mission, always have lots of gadgets and maps and ropes and sometimes even wear a cool hat. When you're nine and over three quarters though, and you have to go to school every day, rescue missions are a lot harder, especially when you don't know where the people you want to rescue are, and you have to hide everything you're doing from the person you're going on the mission for. But even though we didn't have any gadgets or ropes or hats, we spent every break time and lunch time and home time trying to think up new ways that might help Ahmet find his family quickly. By Thursday morning, Tom and Josie and Michael had each come up with a plan, but I hadn't been able to think of anything. Don't worry, said Josie. You can help us see if our ones will work. I tried to smile, but it didn't make me feel any better. On the way to school, we went through all the plans. Tom went first. He said we should write the prime minister and tell her to keep the gates open until Ahmet had found his family. He'd even gotten the address of the prime minister's house from his dad and written out the letter. This is what it looked like. Dear prime minister, we heard from some people on the bus that the government was going to lock the gates so that no more refugees could come in. But our friend Ahmet is a refugee boy you might have heard about him because he's famous for beating up Brendan the bully and he doesn't know where his mom and dad are and needs to find them. Please, Prime Minister, can you please keep the gates open so that he can find them and so that he can be happy again? Thank you. I thought it was a good idea and so did Josie, but Michael said it wouldn't work because the Prime Minister was in charge of the government and had probably been the one who told the security guards to lock the gates and send them her special keys. So we couldn't ask her for any help at all. Then Josie talked about her plan, which was called the special appeal. She said we should ring a newspaper and tell them all about it because her mom and dad were always complaining about how many special appeals there were for charities in their newspapers. And once the appeal went out, Ahmet's mom and dad would be able to see it and get in touch. Josie had written the special appeal out and made it as short as possible so that the newspapers could print it quickly. This is what it looked like. Special appeal. Please, everyone. A boy called Ahmet, who is in Nelson School, ran away from Syria because of bombs and lost his mom and dad, too. If you see a man and woman who looks like this, it's their son. Or your Ahmet's mom and dad, please ring Mrs. Khan on the telephone number at our school, which is below. We need to find Ahmet's family before the gates are locked, which is why this appeal is so special. We all like the special appeal too, but then Tom said that even if we did put the special appeal in a newspaper. The newspaper would probably only be sold in England and Ahmet's mom and dad and anyone who might have seen them would never see it. He knew because he lived in America. When he lived in America, he only ever saw American newspapers. And that's what it must be like in all the other countries of the world too. Then Michael told us about his plan. We should write to the high court to the judge sitting in the highest chair in the land and ask them to order all the security guards to open the gates when they see Ahmet's mom and dad, he whispered. It's called an appeal too. I heard my mom talking about them because her law firm is always doing them for people. I'd ask her to help Ahmet, but she's always complaining about how much work she has to do and she charges hundreds of pounds an hour. But we can't afford that, cried out Tom. I know, replied Michael, rolling his eyes which is why I'm saying we should do the special appeal ourselves. Is it an appeal like my newspaper one? Asked Josie. Sort of, except as for a judge. All we need to do is find out who the highest judge in the land is and write to them, replied Michael. We could even send them your appeal, he said, giving Josie a nudge on the arm. 
we'd only need to change a little bit. Mom's always saying that judges have nothing better to do than read appeals all the time. We were all excited about this idea the most, and as no one could think of anything that might be wrong with it, we decided to go to the library at, at home time and find out the name of the highest judge in the land. So when the last bell rang, we told Ahmet we had to get home quickly so he wouldn't follow us, and we headed straight there. Our library isn't as big as the one Mum works in, but it has larger windows and lots more sunlight, which means you can see all the books better. Mrs. Finicky is our librarian. She always wears bright colored clothes and bright red lipstick, and you don't ever have to look for her because she's always standing behind the library counter. I like Mrs. Finicky because she always gets excited when you ask her anything. She tells people off for not looking after their books properly, just like mom. She has a large sign on her counter that says, books are like people, look past their covers and they'll take you on a great adventure. I like it because it's fun to imagine people as books and guess about what kind of adventure they might take you on. When we got to the library counter, we all looked up at Mrs. Finicky. She was wearing a sky blue top and sky blue skirt. And Mrs. Finicky smiled and looked down at all of us and said, hello, how can I help you today? Tom and Josie and me all looked over at Michael and waited. So he asked, Miss, do you know where we can find out who the highest judge in the land is? We need to find out uh, for uh, homework. Really? Said Mrs. Finicky, frowning. We all nodded. Mrs. Finicky scratched her chin. I think we'll have to look online for that, she said, and she started typing into her computer. We nodded and waited excitedly for an answer as Mrs. Finicky narrowed her eyes and looked at the screen. After a few seconds, she said, here we go, right. Was it the name of the Lord Chief Justice you were after or the High Court Judge for the Family Division? We all looked at each other and then Michael said, Family Division, please. Mrs. Finicky wrote the name out on a piece of paper. When she gave it to Michael, we all looked over his shoulder and it read, HC Family Division, Dame Leslie Williamson. Anything else? Asked Mrs. Finicky. Josie said, does it have her address there, miss? Mrs. Finicky frowned again. Her address? She asked, you have to send her a letter as part of your homework? We all nodded so that it gets to her by tomorrow, I added. It's the High Court of Justice you'll be needing to write to, said Mrs. Finicky, narrowing her eyes at the computer screen again as she copied it down. But even if you post it today and it gets to her office tomorrow or on Saturday, remember that the courts are all closed over the weekend and it won't be the judge who gets your envelope. She'll have a secretary to open her mail for her. She handed the slip of paper with the address to Josie. Anything else? She looked at her downcast faces. I'm sure she'll read your letter eventually, she added gently. It might just take a while. We left and gathered in the hall outside. What are we going to do now? I asked Josie. Her face was all pink, which is what happens when she's really upset. Even if we send the judge the appeal right away, the gates will be shut before she even gets it. It's already Thursday, and after this weekend is over, we'll only have five more days. We all looked at Michael, who shrugged and looked at the floor. We've got to think of a better idea, said Tom urgently, and we all agreed it. Sorry, we all nod and agreed it. But I felt sick inside. I was scared that Ahmet's family wouldn't be found in time. We were all silent on the bus ride home that afternoon. Everyone was thinking hard, but I could tell from all our faces that none of us had come up with anything. I felt the worst because at least everyone else had thought of something. I hadn't come up with a single plan. Now I know it was because my brain wasn't ready to think of anything yet. It wouldn't be ready until the weekend, but when it was, it came up with a plan so fantastic that nobody could say no to it. Not even a judge sitting in the highest chair in the land. That was chapter 14. Chapter 15 next time. Bye.